welcome back to Cityscape. In this episode of Secret People, we will cover Nat Turner, an American preacher and slave known for starting the Southampton Insurrection. From the 17th and 19th century, there is documented evidence of more than 250 slave uprisings throughout the United States. The most significant of them all was the Southampton Insurrection, an event that sent shockwaves throughout the country. As important of an occurrence this was in American history, it rarely received coverage. Why? Well, aside from suppressing the truth that slavery was a terrible institution for both blacks and whites, the result of this rebellion led to some critical legislation that is perhaps too embarrassing to reveal. Despite how uncomfortable the history of institutional slavery in America may be, it's important to revisit it from time to time in order to capture lessons. We can also gain a thing or two regarding the evolution of this country by looking at Nat Turner's rebellion. As always, let's start with a brief background. Nat Turner was born on October 2nd, 1800 in Southampton, Virginia. He was a second generation slave, with him and his father both being named after their owner, Benjamin Turner. He was recorded and mostly known as Nat, however. Turner knew little about his father, who was believed to have escaped from slavery when Turner was a boy. He learned to read and write at a young age and was identified as having naturally high intelligence. He grew up deeply religious and was often seen fasting, praying, or immersed in reading Bible stories. By 1824, Turner himself was a preacher, often conducting services where he had both black and white followers. He had become a leader in his community, but faith had other plans in store. On May 12, 1828, when Turner was 27, he had a vision of leading a great retribution commanded by God. According to accounts by Turner, he had heard a loud noise in the heavens while working in a field. The Holy Spirit appeared and said to him, quote, The serpent was loosened, and Christ had laid down the yoke he had borne for the sins of men, and that you, Turner, should take it on and fight against the serpent. For the time was fast approaching when the first should be last and the last should be first. End quote. Whatever that meant, Turner saw it as a green light for slaughter. Turner began communicating his plans to a small circle of trusted men. All his initial recruits were slaves from his neighborhood. The men communicated their intentions without revealing the plot through songs. Similar to how rappers communicate subliminal shots through their lyrics today. Muskets and firearms were too difficult to collect and would gather unwanted attention. So the rebels decided to use knives, hatchets, axe, and blunt instruments to do the raids. Turner originally planned to begin the rebellion on Independence Day, July 4, 1831, as a bit of an irony, but he had fallen ill and used the delay for additional planning with his co-conspirators. On August 13th, an atmospheric disturbance made the Virginia sun appear bluish grain, which Turner took as a divine signal. He began his rebellion a week later. Starting with just a few fellow slaves, they began to systematically kill every white person by traveling house to house. As Turner expected, the number of men joining the rebellion grew, with both enslaved and free blacks joining alike. The rebellion did not discriminate by age or sex. The rebels killed white men, women, and children. Approximately 60 white people were violently murdered during this insurrection. Most were hacked to death, stabbed, or beaten to death. The state militia was inevitably called in, and the infantry were able to defeat the insurrection with twice the manpower of the rebels. They were also reinforced by three companies of artillery. Turner somehow managed to escape the militias and eluded capture for six weeks. He was eventually caught by a white farmer and returned to authorities. He was tried on November 5, 1831, which led to his conviction and death sentence. Asked if he regretted what he had done, 
Turner responded, Was Christ not crucified? He was hanged six days later in Jerusalem, Virginia. The effects of the Southampton Rebellion were numerous. White mobs engaged in violent reprisals against blacks throughout the country, killing an additional 200 men, women, and children who were not involved in the revolt. The head of Nat Turner was also placed as a warning sign to other slaves as to the consequences of a rebellion. This location was called a Blackhead Signpost, and there are efforts to change the street name today. More importantly, perhaps, are the legal ramifications. Since the insurrection was led by a preacher, blacks were now forbidden to be ordained, and slaves could not meet in church without a white minister. The Mormon church, for an example, did not allow black men to be ordained until 1978. The most powerful legislation as a response to Nat Turner's rebellion, however, was that it was now illegal to educate blacks. Black men and women were forbidden to learn how to read and write. You see, the elites figured that the smarter a slave gets, the more they realize they are quite the equals of whites. So educating blacks became out of the question, point blank, period. Speaking of slavery, one place you can check out is the African American History Museum in Washington, D.C. The museum was opened in 2016 with a ceremony led by President Barack Obama. It is the largest museum dedicated to African American history and culture in the entire world, and the best part about it is that it's free. Those of you who want to visit the National Museum of African American History can save this location on a Cityscape app. Nat Turner's rebellion spread terror to whites around the country and caused many of them to freak out and overreact. With hindsight behind us, what the rebellion revealed was that both blacks and whites lived in fear under a system of slavery. Violence and coercion goes both ways, not just in one direction. Hindsight also shows us that the legal ramifications of this rebellion were more pronounced since blacks were legally forbidden in education, it set the tone for a knowledge gap between the two groups that will take Herculean efforts to repair today. What can we morally conclude from such a bloody incident? Is Nat Turner a hero? Is he a terrorist? He killed white children. I think the best way to answer this question is with another question. Is George Washington a hero? Or is he a terrorist? I guess it all depends on whose side you're looking at it from. See you next time.